I really feel that this thing is perfect. Um, so I'm going to pull these really beautiful sea greens from the actual shot. And for this particular texture, I'm going to set this at 500%. I'm going to decrease the low and the high clip. And I'm going to set that underneath the water, the, the hard light Luca noise. I'm also going to set the mode to screen and this is going to create kind of a really nice uh, deep sea green kind of color. And to not be left alone I'm going to add another noise shader. And for this noise shader this is going to be kind of like the deep blue, brighter blue kind of color. And I'm going to set this to Nutus and Nutris, nut, nut, nit, Nitris. Um, set the scale to 500% and I'm going to add in that really beautiful sky blue. And I'm going to take this and set this underneath my green that I just laid in. And that's going to add even some more beautiful colors to this water. Now as you can see you can get really creative with this. You could see my image of the ocean water right there and the fake organic uh, 3D water that we're creating. So you can really have a lot of fun with this. So, um, also, let's go to basic, click on the bump channel, and inside the bump channel we're going to add another layer texture, and inside the layer texture we're going to go ahead and copy the hard light, uh, we're gonna, I'm sorry, we're going to copy the foam notris layer just by right clicking on noise and it says copy channel and then go over to your bump map go to your layer and go ahead and add a new color shader right click and then paste onto that channel it copies that entire channel over so you don't have to reinvent the wheel then go to the Luca channel copy that one and go over to your bump channel and paste it in um, reason why we're doing this is really simple is that uh, when we do the animate uh, these textures are going to animate and it's really good to have it so that when the textures do animate they are colored the same and they are going to bump the same way which is which is a good thing now click uh, take your first noise channel drop it to the bottom and then that top one that nutris we're gonna set that to add and for the bottom layer, we're going to choose black and white because this is a bump channel, and so it only needs a values of 1 to 0, with the low clip at about 16. And for this bottom one, we're not going to set the white so high because we want the top one to bounce really uh, prominently. So set the top color to about uh, a, a light grayish tone. Now let's go ahead to the top Nutris color and we're going to just do some minor slight adjustments to this. Uh, we're going to adjust the low clip so that the foam is a little more predominant with the bump channel and you can see it above. We'll just bring the Luca channel just down a little bit more. So I really want those uh, foam pieces to pop up higher than the rest of the waves. Yeah, now you're seeing it. Now, if you followed me all the way up to this point, your texture should look something kind of like this. Now, let's go ahead and go to the materials palette, and we are going to add in a reflection. So go to basic and click the reflection tab. That turns on your reflection capabilities. Um, in texture, go ahead and add a Fresnel. And we're going to change the mix strength to about 80%, and then we're going to increase the blurriness to 5. Um, then in order for a reflection to work we need something to reflect so go ahead and drop an HDR tag in for right now and we're gonna create a quick sky drop that HDR tag in now this HDR has some trees and things like that we don't want that on the horizon so we're gonna actually lower the horizon so go to the offset by clicking on the sphere and change this offset to 12% just uh, adjust it then let's take a quick render 
and those little reflections add a lot and uh, if you're following it now it should look something like this so now we're gonna add a wave type of displacement to our scene so in order to do this go and add a formula effector and take that formula effector and drop it underneath your drop it underneath your plane and you can see it automatically deforms it into this kind of ripple we're gonna adjust this real quick we're gonna change the size of the height of the ripple to be not so large we're going to adjust the position of it so that it's going in one direction and we're gonna adjust the formula that's being used as well just just trial and error that I was messing around with it but to get kind of like a smooth uh, ripple without it being too quick or sharp, I set it to 0.5 uh, when you times it by the pi. And that should give you about the right size. And then click on your formula. And we don't want the angle to be so sharp, so we're just going to stretch this out a little bit. And though it's not perfect, this gives you kind of an idea of real rolling waves coming in. Here's a quick test render. This is definitely a start and we are going in the right direction. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a basic cloudy sky using Cinema 4D and it's a really easy technique. So create a new material and then turn off the color and turn off the specularity click on the luminance channel and inside the luminance click that little arrow and we're gonna go to gradient now for the gradient we're gonna switch it from 2du to 2dv so we get like a vertical feeling of the gradient instead of a horizontal then in your sky texture drop that material onto your sky as you can see it's darker down at the bottom and brighter at the top which is exactly what we want so let's go into this luminance gradient and we're going to adjust the horizon. So we're going to find where the middle is and we're going to add a dark, darker color that we're going to pull from the image that we have. And it's going to be like a deep sky blue. And then at the horizon line, we're going to move this up to a lighter sky blue, which would be the horizon. And these two points are going to be pretty close, and we're going to slowly edge those together. And you could probably see it on the screen where the horizon starts to begin. And this is important because, you know, this is going to define what's going to get reflected onto our uh, oceanic water. So from here, I'm going to go and I'm going to click on the color area right before we hit the base of the cloud and then we're gonna move that up a little bit next to that we're gonna add the bottom of the cloud color and that's gonna be a really dark gray and then with that being the base color uh, the bottom base of our cloud we're also gonna need kind of a mid color of the cloud and then the top which is gonna be pure white or close to it because that's what the Sun is reflecting right and then we're going to have some more clouds above that, but this is what we can see from this image right here. Now adjust those little dots in between your gradient to get a really nice sharp edge on certain areas of your cloud. Now adjust your turbulence, and as you can see, it's now going to morph the entire cloud. The more turbulence you add, the more it will adjust. You can adjust your scale of your turbulence you can also adjust your frequency and how much it does adjust now if you hold the alt button you can click and drag more colors ranges onto the top and I'm doing this simply so I can get more variation on my reflection uh, when I do cast it onto my ocean water I would also like to adjust the color that my water reflects to kind of like a skyish blue 